Alright, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, we're just hopping right back in into a quick um, kind of a completion of my day's activity actually. I just want to show you guys uh, what I've done with my character so far. So I managed to get my Acolyte uh, upgraded. Let me just lower this volume a little bit. I managed to get my Acolyte upgraded into a Priest. Uh, so here I am. Uh, I can actually select a few titles by the way. Uh, I have some of these things. Uh, Experience Explorer. Yeah, unlock reward max HP. Uh, yeah, I think I should be able to do that. What is this? A G1 or agility? So these each give uh, some unique. Uh, what do you call this? Unlock. But I have already unlocked these, so I should already have these um, bonuses, I suppose. Yeah, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna be uh, using this. I don't think it's only one uh, stat at one time. Uh, regardless, uh, so I have unlocked uh, some achievements. Unlock title to obtain. So, uh, agility 3, attack speed 3. So, I guess, yeah, these two stack. Okay, awesome. So, anyway, um, I've managed to get myself uh, to becoming a priest. So as you can see here, um, I'm now an upgraded uh, character and I've gone from Acolyte to being a Priest. Uh, and the thing is that in order for me to, to achieve going to High Priest, I have to uh, make it to another round of job level 50. So it's not going to be that difficult because I already know what it's like. Basically, a lot of the leveling in this game has to do with daily tasks. And uh, it's, it's really nice that they, they have compiled the daily tasks into, like, you know, you can get it all done within an hour. It, it may take a little longer once you're high level because you get a lot of those double reward tasks. And uh, they take a little longer to do, but you don't want to miss them out because they give you a whole bunch of XP and job XP. And that's one of the easiest ways for you to level up in this game. So um, you really want to get your dailies done as soon as you are in the game. And then... Um, once you've done all your dailies, you'll compile a whole bunch of Odin's Blessing. So you get Odin's Blessing by doing all your dailies. You also get them by just being in Prontera. This one you'll passively collect. Uh, as you do your uh, dailies, you'll be passing through Prontera, Prontera several times. And uh, eventually you'll be having enough Odin's Blessing. So once you've stacked your Odin's Blessing, uh, the next thing you want to ideally do is uh, just farm monsters to level up. Now, when you're doing your tasks, of course, um, you will be leveling up your character. And uh, uh, what do you call this? Just by farming for specific tasks. So if you do pass by Pontera when you're doing your daily tasks, uh, let's say you've done one out of five tasks and you can collect one of them. Just go and collect it from the board. And the reason you want to collect them is because you just want to start to get your Odin's Blessings going. And the reason for this is as you do the rest of your daily tasks, you're going to spend these Odin's Blessings to just farm whatever monsters. And they may not give you the most amount of XP because sometimes you may farm uh, lower level monsters. But regardless, it is still a uh, faster way for you to uh, finish up your Odin's Blessing and get stamina going. Because uh, stamina is is kind of important in this game. And the only reason you want to finish up your Odin's Blessings and get stamina is so that you can do your life skills, which are all of these things. And um, you really, really want to level these up so that you can uh, keep your gear and your stats uh, maintained at a higher level. And all of that has to do with smelting. And smelting is really difficult to level up because it requires you to uh, get a lot of mining. So as you can see, I'm already at mining level 3, going to mining level 4, and I have not even reached smelting level 2. So um, a, a lot of this has to do with the fact that you get a lot of resources uh, out of mining, but uh, to smelt those resources, you need really high specific uh, resources. So you can get a whole bunch of like coal, it's easy, but rough bradium is really rare. So um, it takes you a while to get these elements so that you can actually level these things up. And everything that you smelt is useful. Everything that you smelt uh, will be useful throughout the game because you need to level up a lot of your equipment from uh, you know like 6 to 15 and all of these uh, enhancement stuff uh, are really important uh, so you, you really do want to level them up as much as you can uh, but the good part about all these life skills about mining and smelting and all of these the really good thing about it is the fact that 
uh, you could use gear that you obtain very early in the game. For example, they're level 25 gear. They may not be as good as level 50 gear, level 70 gear, but you can level them up from level 25 and they will keep up with the stats of level 50 and 70 gears. So by the time another player actually gets his level 70 gear set completed, you could have uh, a level 25 gear set that has equal stats um, or, or maybe even more than that of a level, t level 70 player. So this is really good and also at the same time of leveling up these things, it's uh, very free to play in the sense where all you got to do is level up these skills to improve your, uh, you know, your ability to craft these uh, items that you will need to smell to, to level up your, uh, what do you call these weapons and that way you can keep up with the stats of a higher level player. So that's one of the main things I wanted to uh, make sure that people understand. The Aru life skills are really useful and you really want to get into smelting as much as you can. Now, uh, what, are, what do you really need for smelting? Uh, the, the part of cooking is not really important. As far as I can see, what cooking is used for, a lot of these foods are purely for buffs. They do not provide you anything other than buffs and they are probably really useful very, very late in the game uh, when you're really stacked with all of these, um, what do you call this? Uh, cooking uh, uh, ingredients and you don't really want to you know sell them or anything like that but early on my suggestion is use these for a, for your uh, guild to level up your guild tasks so you go to your guild essentially and then you click on uh, events and then you check guild orders and then you check if there's any guild orders that uh, you have the items for and if you do have these items use them up uh, and also use them for like this I got only need one more let me ask for a bit of help uh, and you you know you can also do uh, some COC tasks. COC tasks may also utilize certain cooking ingredients, but other than that, you don't need to spend them uh, cooking anything because they're not very useful so early on in the game. They are useful really late because as you can see, certain things like um, smoked dragon meat. It doesn't really say here, uh, unfortunately, because I'm not high level enough. Uh, but there are certain things that uh, oh yeah, this one actually tells you. Why doesn't this one tell you? Uh, favored by many. I think these are gifts. This is a gift ingredient. But this one, for example, bonus heal plus 10%, uh, which may, uh, and, and you see this, uh, bonus heal received uh, 10%, bonus heal done 10%, debuff resistance 10%. A lot of these late game buffs are percentage based, so they scale really well based on your level. But if your level is low, these things are not as, as good as uh, something as simple as uh, you know, the early level ingredients, which is just plus 10. Plus 10 is way better than plus 10% early on because you don't really have much to fill up that 10%. But later on in the game, uh, these things will be really, really useful. So don't focus so much on cooking. Focus, focus on your mining, focus on your smelting. And uh, a lot of uh, smelting ingredients also come from gardening, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate because gardening, I know, is a little bit of a pain, but there's actually a solution to that. And I will tell you what it is in sh uh, shortly. Uh, another part of smelting that you will need is fishing. So fishing is also involved, uh, where you get certain of these uh, items like turquoise, uh, cobblestones, uh, shells, and eventually conch shells, uh, fishes, and all these things are also used in smelting. So fishing, mining, gardening, all these three will be used in smelting. Uh, you don't really need to use them in cooking, so uh, use your ingredients to do guild missions, to do COC missions, and then uh, sell off uh, whatever's left because you don't want to uh, carry the weight. Of course, if you're a max strength character, you have a lot of strength, so you have a lot of carry weight. And what I mean by that is, if you look at the stats of a character, uh, strength essentially increases your weight limit. So if you're not a uh, physical DPS, melee physical DPS character, you're going to struggle with inventory and you want to keep yourself as light as possible. So one of the best ways to do that is uh, just get rid of all of your cooking ingredients uh, once you're done with all your tasks. You don't need them. You can buy those things easily from vendors and you much rather save that space uh, so that you can farm better, so you can do missions better and you will get so much gold that you won't be worried about just purchasing those when you need to do certain missions. Now, the next thing you need to know about fishing. Fishing is a little bit tricky because you want to make sure that you get the uh, fish that is preferred by the uh, fishing instructor. And uh, there are certain fishes that he will ask for specifically that is part of his like uh, special list. And it will tell you when you use the magic bait. Uh, but it's also a chance of whether you manage to get into that uh, top list. So if you manage to get in like the top 10, 20 list, I think you get like additional... Uh, you know, uh, fishing points and those additional fishing points will allow you, it is these things, let me show you what they look like. 
uh, these things, yeah, you get fish prints. So if you get additional fish prints, you'll be able to get up to 20 fish prints and you can buy the automated rod. Uh, sometimes a free gift for actually participating in that uh, at a higher level. Like if you get the right fish at like top 20 or something, you can automatically get an automatic fishing rod. The idea of fishing is for you to just get that automatic fishing rod and then level yourself up as much as you can. Manually fishing is not recommended because it takes way too much time. You much rather just purchase, uh, you know, mining tools and you know spend your time automatically mining and try your luck getting the fish the next day. It is much more better spending your time that way because fishing takes uh, not only your stamina, it takes your time to manually click and focus the target uh, to do fishing. Uh, on the other hand, mining is this whole other thing. Mining, um, my recommendation is to always buy the advanced pickaxe. You got no reason to buy the normal pickaxe unless you're broke, which is nearly impossible in this game. Uh, unless I, I have no idea how you managed to do that, but uh, <laughs> if you did, uh, just God bless you. But anyway, the, try to get the advanced pickaxe as much as possible. The advanced pickaxe yields you two different uh, mining uh, rewards for each percent that is being used, and it mines twice as fast. So it is way, way better. It gives you like almost four times the value of the regular pickaxe, but it costs three times more. So you're getting four times value uh, for the cost of three times. It's totally worth it. Uh, just always stack yourselves with advanced pickaxes. They only cost one weight. So you can buy like 10 of them and just keep them. There's no harm. Uh, I just tried to buy a few of them just to see whether anything affects my weight in any way, but it doesn't in any way. As you can see, I have like a whole bunch of them. And I will go and AFK mine uh, for the rest of my stamina once I'm done with this farming. So that's the second thing you got to know about uh, life skills. Uh, or rather fourth thing you gotta know about life skills but anyway uh, gardening this is the trickiest thing to do now uh, there's a lot of people complaining about the gardening mechanics because you can only do it in channel one uh, you will be uh, competing against other players who are stacked up there uh, because the way the uh, gathering works is that once the gathering timer hits zero and it says that it's you're able to gather now those initial like 10 to 20 seconds of gathering the plants have stacked up I think like five to six stacks of the same plant. Problem is each of them have a regrowth time of a minute or something like that. If it's raining, I think it's like 20 to 30 seconds. So the problem is that these six stacks, you can immediately continuously gather them. Uh, but after those six stacks are done, the cooldown of a minute will start to tick for all of those stacks individually. And this causes players to be waiting there uh, continuously to try to gather whatever is available. But if you have six players waiting at the spot at the same time, all six or five or six, I'm not sure if it's five or six, but all of them will be able to gather at once. And right after all of them gather, all of them will get the ingredients, but the cooldown will immediately start for everyone. And it'll be a stacked cooldown. So it is equally bad. The best thing you want to do is try to get yourself there first get the five stacks and the moment the cooldown starts, just let the other players have their fun. You don't really want to be a part of that. And your goal in doing this is uh, do the 20 XP gathering uh, ingredients. The uh, level one XP uh, gathering ingredients are not used for smelting. They are only used for cooking food. So you don't really need these. You just want to get maybe one or two just to uh, get this uh, gardening cart unlocked just so you, you know what, what it is and um, you don't really get any XP for unlocking these anyway. You just want to get it done. Uh, and then once you at least have these things, this information here, uh, essentially you want to just rush these 20 XP gard gardenings whenever you can. If you can't, it's okay. Just wait for another day. It's nothing to rush for. Uh, you're not going to win anything by uh, competing against tens of thousands of players trying to gather at once. Uh, but once you start to or manage to actually get some of these and manage to get to level 2, you are in the safe zone because let me tell you, level two gathering spots are really, really um, quite rare. They're quite empty. Uh, you can really go there and gather. So right now it says can gather and I probably should, but it's okay. I don't mind waiting for later. But uh, when it says can gather uh, and you're in level two or level three especially, uh, try to do it as much as you can because um, uh, you'll have very little uh, people gathering at higher levels, especially I think level three and level four gathering spots. There's almost no one there. Even when it's raining, 
uh, even when it's time to gather, uh, there's almost no one there. So uh, like this, this is can gather, but if I go to that spot in Morocco or Sagra Desert right now, it'll be almost empty. There'll probably be like one or two players because not many people have managed to level up their uh, gardening to that high of a level, which is <laughs> really, really stupid, but that's just unfortunately the case. If they were to revise gardening to be similar to mining in the future, uh, that might help a lot of players. But regardless, the easiest thing to do is mining. So just do whatever you can the best as much as possible. Uh, with all the stamina you have and use whatever balance stamina you have to smelt whatever you can uh, and sell those things early on if you don't want to level up your items so early on just sell whatever you have in the exchange center and uh, by doing that you'll be able to get a lot of crystals and you want to get your crystals to do certain things like increase your inventory storage uh, and maybe even rent, uh, what do you call this, uh, rent amount and all of these sorts of things. Uh, especially once you've unlocked renting amount, uh, and most of that happens when you reach uh, the job level 2. So once you reach the class uh, level 2, you'll be able to unlock uh, specific mounts and stuff. You'll get a tutorial and all of that. So you need crystals for all of these things. So just uh, use the exchange center as, mu as much as you need to. Uh, but of course, don't forget to do certain things like uh, what do you call this trade in the exchange center. So right now, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pop something in to trade. So I'm just gonna pop uh, maybe, uh, maybe one of these. I'll just list this bradium, and then uh, I will delist it. Uh, it's gonna cost me just to list and delist, but I don't really care. I have a lot of other things I'm trying to sell here, so I'll just keep it as is. So uh, just try to get all of these, uh, what do you call this, side quests and all these tasks done as much as you can. Because uh, once you're done with the dailies and once you're done with all the live skills, there's not really much to do in the game. AFK farming is not really worth it because uh, you're probably going to only get like 20 to 30 XP and you're going to need like, uh, you're going to need like, uh, look at this, a million, uh, 1.6 million XP, which you'll never be able to get by AFK farming. You'd rather just turn the game off, come back the next day and do your dailies again and you'll level up super fast. Uh, so yeah, that's just my uh, advice uh, if, you know, and, and whatever. Uh, and besides, um, some additional advice for those of you who want to be Acolytes. So let me just tell you that I initially uh, picked the Acolyte because I do see myself in the future maybe switching to the Monk class. But the class is still locked and I'm not sure if I will be allowed to switch the class. Regardless, I decided to just go with the uh, priest and high priest uh, line because it's something I also wanted to try as a full support and I enjoy playing it. So uh, what I can say is from my review of this class is that it's an extremely useful class. Uh, there is none like it. There's no other healer, uh, you know, buffer in the game that is as powerful as the priest. Uh, the priest has so many useful skills uh, that are very, very powerful in the party especially for dungeons, AFK instances, and stuff like that. Uh, not AFK instances, uh, instances in AFK farming. Uh, but uh, you must understand that uh, you are not going to be able to succeed very well in solo farming. You're not going to be as effective as a lot of other types of players. Uh, so, like, in these cases, uh, actually, I should be requesting for a uh, AFK party. And what I want to request for is a... Uh, X wielding pirate party, maybe uh, dagger wielding, maybe. Uh, let's request this one. Okay, let's try to follow this one. Where are you? Uh, let's see where this person is. Are you nearby? Uh, let's see. Okay, we're being teleported. But uh, essentially, you want to do as much of uh, party farming as plausible. Okay, you know what? These guys are not really here. Where are they? Uh, no, no, no. You know what? I want to leave this party. I don't really want to be a part of this. Uh, I need a party that is actually following this uh, criteria. Pirate skeleton, skeleton worker. I think this is what I actually want. Pirate skeleton. Removed. Okay. Uh, how about you? Okay, let's just follow this person and see where it goes. They're all leading me out of the ship, but why? Why are you... Are you all out of the ship farming for this? Really? Hmm. Really strange. Yeah, they're literally out of the ship, uh, farming what is in the ship. So I'm not sure why these people, I think they, they just forgot to uh, end their parties. 
there should be a setting that ends these people's uh, parties if you know they're not doing it. You know what? I'm going to just decide for myself. I'm going to go to my Odin's Blessing, click the recommended training spots, uh, go to the uh, dagger wielding uh, pirates. There we go. And uh, I'm going to re uh, not request, I'm going to create a party uh, and call it an AFK dagger wield. So you want to try to do as much uh, party farming and all that as possible. Uh, as a priest, but in the dungeon, let me tell you, people will be looking for you as much as they w uh, as they would like to, you know, solo things and prove they are a superhero and all these crap. They can't. They need you, and uh, that's pretty much the best part about uh, being a, a healer or a support is that the game is designed in such a way that these characters actually are really, really useful, are really, really powerful. And as a result, you really want to uh, rely on them as much as you can. Uh, and that's, that's a good thing and a bad thing uh, for some people because some people really want to solo. Like, uh, okay, you know what? Let's turn off my auto. Let's try to invite this guy to a party. Let's try to invite this guy to a party as well. Can I invite this guy? Uh, let's invite you to a party. I don't know why these people like to do things solo. They're just not going to get as much XP. And I think they don't really realize that. But um, yeah, this is unfortunate. Anyway. Um, oh, you know what? Let's not auto match. I'm worried that might just affect everything that I'm working on here. Dagger wielding pirate. There you go. Auto accept. Okay. I... Hope that uh, suffices. People should be joining us eventually. So uh, anyway, uh, but in, yeah, so in dungeons and instances, you're really, really powerful. In PvP as well, I realized the cleric is really powerful. I've been watching some PvP gameplay, some higher level gameplay, and I realized that the uh, cleric is actually quite powerful in the dungeons as well uh, because of the buff abilities, the, the heal abilities. And let me just show you some of the skills, skills that I really, really rely on. Uh, you'll be unlocking combo skills once you go to, go to the second uh, level of job class, and that allows you to combo certain specific skills. And uh, the, the trick about comboing skills, which I'm still learning, is the fact that certain skills will, will take uh, more uh, than your, uh, what do you call this, uh, than your cooldown, more, more time than your, uh, than your max cooldown allows. And your cooldown is determined by this stat, uh, which is your haste. Uh, details, I think it's here. Haste, there we go. 424. So, haste is what decreases a skill's variable cooldown. And haste is determined by your dexterity, right? Yeah, dexterity determines haste. So, you want to have a, a good amount of dexterity on a cleric so that you can actually have a lot of haste. That way, you can really farm and cast skills really, really fast. But at the same time, you, you would also rather have certain skills not be at max level so that you can uh, save uh, SP a little bit. But more importantly, you can almost cast them consistently. And this is one of the most powerful things. So in order to make sure that you actually can cast them consistently, let's say you've out-leveled them or over-leveled them or anything like that, what you can do is you can go to your custom skill here uh, you can actually click, uh, like this is my offensive skill, uh, combo skill, Holy Light. And I can lower the level of Holy Light to a point where it allows me to cast the skill uh, almost continuously. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is that I can't check here exactly how often that will allow me. Uh, but let's just say I, I do that. Okay. So now if I were to go back here, uh, let's just check whether it shows me... Uh, there we go. We are casting Signum Cruces, uh, and you can see Holy Light is is almost full as well. And we are casting Holy Light almost consistently, but we want to get it a little faster. Uh, okay, you know what? I think the best thing, the best way we can figure this out is if we go to Skills. Uh, we add Holy Light as a separate uh, skill over here. There we go. And then what we do is we decrease this so that it, it matches with our uh, 10 seconds. So it is 5 out of 5. 
Uh, yeah, it is five out of five. So let's remove this. Let's go be go back here and let's switch our skills so we can see how often we are casting holy light. And as you can see, we're going to be casting holy light uh, as as often as it allows us. But uh, I believe that. 10 seconds minus 10 seconds. So the fixed cooldown is 2 seconds. And we can't go lower than that. Uh, but let me just make sure that I'm not uh, skill locking myself because of this. So to make sure we're not doing that, what I'm going to do is go to skills. I'm going to remove this uh, special created combo skill. This one. Yeah, I'm going to remove this one. Uh, let's remove this. Wait, can I remove this? Why can't I remove this? Um, okay, there we go. We can remove that. Okay, so now that we remove that, let's see how Holy Light casts. 3, 2, 1, 6, 5, 4. So for some reason, it's still taking uh, 6 seconds. Uh, which is a little bit puzzling for me. I'm not really sure why it's taking six seconds. Uh, assuming my cooldown shows that it only will take me. And I'm not hit by any debuffs, am I? No, I am not hit by any debuffs. Hmm. Strange. I should, I should be able to bring this down to two seconds, right? Looking at this mats here, it should bring me uh, able to able me to bring it down to two seconds but for some reason it does not perhaps I have to turn off the auto or something let's try that let's try that or maybe I have to be out of combat for it to reset I'm not sure certain things are just really strange in this game and uh, I'm still figuring it out but uh, yeah there's something I wanted to share to you it is something that you can uh, try and and decrease the cooldown to the minimum so that you are able to cast more frequently and also conserve some mana and, and sometimes that you only need just enough damage to kill the uh, enemy you don't really need to do more than uh, the necessary amount of damage and also once you get things like holy booster you'll be able to do so much of damage from holy light that you don't really need to cast it at max level so i don't think this increases the cooldown of holy light as well in any way mm. Yeah, for, for some reason. Variable cooldown. Six seconds. Eight, nine, ten. Ten point eight. Alright, we'll just try that. Ten point eight and we'll see how that works. The rest of these don't really have uh, variable cooldowns, so it's nothing too worrying. Uh, the regular heal does have a variable cooldown. If you level this up, uh, too much, you're gonna you're gonna eventually out. Uh, I mean, you're gonna start to have increasing cooldown. Uh, the way I see it, uh, if you wanna go for a light blessing, which is the alliance heal over time, then you may want to stop this at five. But this is your most powerful heal for the cleric class. Uh, on the other hand, as for blessing, you wanna max this all the time because it gives strength, dex, and int for all friendly targets, and this is essentially all the DPS. Uh, uh, what do you call this core DPS attribute so you want to just max this out and always keep this going and take the increased agility at least once if you want to go more into farming more into AFK mode then you want to max this out because this is uh, going to increase your damage a lot because as a cleric you're not going to do much damage uh, from purely casting spells uh, you mu you much rather just uh, auto attack people the only other way you're going to do a lot of uh, damage is with uh, holy light uh, but Holy Light relies on uh, dexterity to cast, not really your agility in any way. So this increases your attack speed and agility. It's nice to have, but uh, you, you know, if you ask me, you much much rather just max Holy Light. Uh, just make sure your cooldown is as low as possible, and uh, you know you can one shot enemies when you have the Holy Booster, and that is way more powerful for you. Uh, you also want to take take certain things like. Um, the SP recovery skill because it's a passive skill as it says here so it's just going to be on you you don't have to worry about casting it uh, Impositor Manus is really really powerful because it allows you to increase your attack and as it says here it converts your normal attack damage to sacred damage uh, and it affects your uh, friendly targets so this is something really really powerful because it increases your uh, total attack by 2% towards the end 
So it's going to effectively increase all your damage. So I'm probably going to go for this right now. Uh, but before I apply it, let me just show you some other things. Sanctuary is also really powerful. Uh, it increases the, uh, uh, what do you call this, uh, healing effects uh, in an entire area by creating a consecrated ground. Uh, this thing, the, the only thing about this thing is that it, uh, what do you call this, it only affects a specific area. So, um, what do you call this? If you move out of that area, it doesn't really follow you. It's different from Light Blessing because Light Blessing originates from the, uh, what do you call this, uh, caster, as it says here, 30 meters from the caster. Uh, this, on the other hand, uh, affects people in an area. So, you can use this. It is quite, it's really powerful. It's more powerful than Light Blessing, but it's not going to follow the uh, caster in any way. So, uh, that's just something to, to take note of. Resurrection is one of the most important skills to be taken with you in a dungeon. I'm going to hold on to this until I level up a few other things before I take this. Uh, but this is really, really useful in high-level dungeons, especially because you can resurrect a friendly target without needing to go there and manually do it with, uh, with a leaf. So this is a very, very powerful skill, very, very useful skill. Um, and uh, it can also use to be to attack undead, but more than often you just want to use it to revive an ally. Uh, and more importantly, when you're fighting undeads and an ally goes down, be careful that this is not on auto play. Otherwise, it will automatically uh, cast on the undead before reviving an ally uh, if you're closer to the undead. So that can be a problem. It can be really tricky to use resurrection if you're fighting undead. But if you're not fighting undead, uh, it's you know you can easily use the skill to help an ally. It's very very powerful. Gloria is also really really strong. Increases the luck of friendly targets, uh, which increases your crit and crit resistance. This is really good later in the game, not so much early on, because your critical is not going to do uh, as much damage uh, because the, you know it is a, it is a cumulative chance. So you really want to have high crit uh, damage first of all, and also you want to have high you know critical chance. So five percent is not going to do you so much. You much rather just increase your attack by a permanent two percent. Uh, Ruwak, on the other hand, I've seen some people. Uh, really use this very well in PvP because this thing allows you to reveal hidden targets, right? So this is really good in uh, in in PvP, but it also just does damage regardless. And on top of just doing damage, you also can uh, level this thing up once you get to level three, which is Numa, which gives you a defensive barrier uh, that makes you immune to range physical attack. This is really really powerful for PvP. Ruwak and Numa are essential PvP skills. They're going to make you super powerful in PvP, and uh, they're going to reveal rogues to you, uh, which is going to be really pesky. And you know they will try to hunt down the clerics. Ruwak is your essential ultimate. Uh, counter to that and once you get to level 3 you get Numa. you're going to have so much resistance against the range attackers to try to DPS you down and this is going to have uh, give you the resistance that you need. Uh, Angelus increases the defense for all party members, it's really good for dungeons uh, it is also a little bit late game because it increases based on your vitality and you're not going to have too much of that early on, you're going to have more of intelligence uh, Angelus, once you go to a sump tier, is also going to increase based on your vitality, which you're not going to have too much of. So these are all pretty late game. Uh, Magnificat increases uh, the SP regen of all party members. This is really, really powerful uh, because it's going to give party regen to everyone, but it is a, uh, what do you call this, active skill. It is not as useful as SP recovery because it's a passive skill and it helps you. Uh, whereas uh, for the rest of your party members, they can still manage themselves using potions and stuff. So you don't really need this early on. But this is useful in maybe um, uh, guild battles, uh, PvP battles, where uh, you know potions are going to be really tricky to use and they're going to get debuffed a lot of the time. You much rather have this skill because you can at least boost your SP regen because you want to have as much SP as you can in those kinds of fights. But in most PvE content, you don't really need this. Uh, Aspercio is not related. Uh, it is a normal attack, uh, what do you call this? Uh, it, it, it just buffs your allies to gain the holy attribute when they use normal attacks. So I haven't really tested this. I've seen some people say that uh, it's just gonna, it's just like a damage booster. Uh, but I'm not really sure how exactly. Because it says holy attribute, but I don't really know what that does. So I will uh, get back to you guys once I level this up. Actually, you know what? Let me just drop this once. Uh, pump this up a little bit just to see what does it doesn't say here and I can't hold this or anything to check yeah there's no way I can actually check unless I, I, I pump a level into it you know what uh, that's okay never mind uh, so anyway here 
uh, Expiatio, I hope I'm saying this right, Expiatio, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. But regardless, this thing is useful for Maze users. So you're not going to be needing it in the build that I'm working on. Uh, I don't rely on the Maze build. I don't think the Maze build is really good right now for Cleric because you have too many skills that rely on intelligence. And Maze build is a strength build, so you're not really going to be using your... Uh, heals very effectively. However, a mace build may be good with uh, the vitality build. So a Sumtio, uh, which comes from Angelus and these kinds of skills will be really, really powerful in the mace build because all of these uh, utilize your vitality. And certain skills like Magnificat as well, um, they don't rely on intelligence or anything like that. They just increase your SP region flat out. Uh, so yeah, you, you may be able to self-sustain with a hammer build. Uh, without ever needing to go for uh, Holy Light because all this is magic attack related. So you, you have a way of building yourself without all of these magic attack skills, but you may lose uh, quite a lot of value in what the priest really is if you go for this. So that's, you know, all the best to you if you want to do that. Uh, there it may be a way of working it out, but it's going to be a very specific build and maybe a very late game build. And I'll tell you why late game. Uh, Divine Protection reduces damage received from Demon and Undead. It's quite straightforward. This one, as you can see, increases the attack by your strength. So once you go for the physical build, I'll come to this. Uh, the next is this one, Turn Undead. Turn Undead is a very straightforward skill. It's just going to do a whole bunch of damage and it will kill Undeads if your um, uh, uh, Intelligence Luck skill level is, hi is higher than the target. But if not, it's just going to do a crap ton of damage to them. And it does a lot of damage to bosses. It has a high chance to crit. Turn Undead is a really, really powerful late game skill. It is very, very powerful against bosses. Uh, and you want to take this skill uh, you know, I as soon as you can, of course. Um, right now, I'm not going to because uh, I feel that uh, you know, I want to increase all the existing skills. But this is just another skill you want to add to your belt as soon as you can. Okay, now, let me just pump this stat first. Okay, now let me tell you about the physical build. Um, I noticed as you go towards the High Priest build, right, as you go much later into the High Priest game, you actually can go towards a physical attack build a lot safer. And you can see that there's a lot of things here that say uh, deals number of Holy Mark stacks, attack Holy Sacred physical damage that ignores defense. Uh, this one, Demon Bane, increases your attack by strength, increase more damage to demon and undead monsters. Uh, so all of these things uh, essentially increase your physical damage and are very, very useful for an offensive priest. But this is something that you can only go for really late. So my suggestion would be for you to just go support healer uh, or support DPS uh, with the regular priest build and save uh, some hammers to the late game. And once you reach the late game, grab a hammer, grab a shield, and you can create a separate build. And how you want to do that, it's not going to cost you anything. All you got to do is click load here. You will get one free second loadout that will completely reset your start points for you. And you can also buy new loadouts for about 5,000 crystals, which is not very expensive. You'll be having this easily as you play the game. Uh, so what you want to do is prepare yourself for the DPS build, like I have. I have a slot here called DPS. I haven't filled it up yet, but I, I have an idea of what I want to do. And essentially what you want to do is when you have the DPS build ready, uh, you, you can actually experiment by pumping stats into all of these skills. So uh, I'll probably show you that in a bit. Let me just check how close I am. Okay, I I'm, I'm still have a bunch of Odin's Blessings to uh, utilize. And as you can see, I'm farming here. Where is this guy here? So he's right next to me. That's nice of him. Uh, I do believe my party is still auto-accepting. Yeah, I'm still auto-accepting. Uh, so that is nice. Uh, let's just see if um, we are doing okay here. Yeah, I think we're doing okay. I've got all my buffs on him as well, so that's really nice. So uh, let me check whether I have pumped this skill. No, I have not. So I need to add this skill to my belt. Let me see if I can add it uh, as a fusion skill. Custom skill, there we go, Imp Im uh, Impositor Magnus. So Impositor Magnus, I believe I want to add it together with my blessing skills. So let's put it here. Yeah, and now I can go to my skills. And uh, th this thing should essentially have all three, as you can see. And it's already added here. So I, I should be able to auto. Yeah, I should be able to auto, right? 
Okay, there we go. And now we are autoing, and now we will have uh, the new. Oh, that's a lag. And the game straight up crashed. Okay, uh, give me a sec. Let me get it back up. Okay, we managed to uh, get ourselves back in the game. That was hilarious. So the game does crash, yes, as you guys can see. So now we have Impositor Magnus uh, being cast every now and then, and it's going to be really, really useful. Uh, it's going to make sure that we have our damage buffs uh, going. Uh, and as you can see, my character is casting it as often as he can, so that's nice to know. And when he does that, he only utilizes a single slot to cast it. So uh, these combination skills are super useful. Allows you to keep a whole bunch of skills in your belt and cast them, uh, you know, uh, all at once, one by one, uh, whichever is necessary. Okay, so now going back to the build just now. Uh, wait, what's this? What did I get? Is this the reason I crashed just now? Because I, I didn't collect something here? Nah, it's not. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll be so upset if it, uh, upset if it was. Okay, so... Um, yeah, so you can actually create a second slot and you can build a physical build. And uh, I will try to distribute my stats to show you what that's going to look like. But as I told you, until you reach High Priest, you won't be able to unlock these essential physical attack skills. And th these skills increase your attack regardless of physical and magic as it says. 1% of your attack, it just says that. So uh, if it is 1% of your attack, um, you know, as it says in normal attack, so it's most likely based on your weapon. So it says weapon restriction mace, clearly. So these mace skills will, will completely give you a whole other character build. But these essential skills are not unlocked until you get to High Priest. Like if I were to just compare uh, Acolyte, in Acolyte, the only mace skill I have is Mace Mastery. Right? Yeah, there's, there's nothing else here that requires a mace. Uh, if I go to uh, Priest, in Priest I have... Um, what do I have here that's only... That's only mace. Uh, One-handed... Book. No, I can use anything there. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is mace. Okay, this is mace, but this is passive. So you could unfortunately have it for any class. But yeah, this is a mace skill. Um, yeah, there you go. So you only have two different skills that are mace focused. Of course, you can take the other skills. You can take things that don't require uh, intelligence. You can take things that don't require magic damage. And uh, you, can, you can pump those in as well. But these are the only two maze-focused skills. But once you get to High Priest, you start to unlock certain uh, even more skills that are uh, focused on... Uh, what do you call this, mace, uh, you know, the more mace focus. And these skills may completely change the way your character works, especially these two, Sacred Hammer, Holy Strike. Uh, they're super powerful mace focus skills. And until I unlock them, I can't really, you know, uh, emphasize too much on how powerful they are. But they seem really, really strong for what it's worth. And I think with those four mace skills, I may be able to unlock a whole different type of character. Uh, but for now, this is the build I'm going for, and to all my buddies who are taking, uh, going down the priest pathway, I, I, let me just tell you that it is an awesome class to play, it is super fun, uh, you are super helpful in uh, instances and party fights and, you know, MVPs and all sorts of that, you're going to keep your party alive all the time, you just need to uh, keep yourself, you know, keep stay calm, be patient, and understand that there will be people who won't understand your usefulness, but there will be a lot of other parties, especially veterans of the uh, RPG genre, they will understand how useful exactly uh, a priest can be in the team, but always, uh, you know, learn to accept your limits, learn to understand that you are not a solo class, you're not going to excel well by yourself, you need a party to, to be the best, uh, you know, to utilize the best of your abilities, but yes, in the party, you are pretty much the star that people don't really talk about. And you're obviously going to get MVP for healing. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want MVP for healing? So, that's another thing. Uh, mounts. Okay, uh, once you get to uh, you know, unlock your second class, you're going to be able to unlock certain other mounts as well. I have not decided to, to switch my mount or anything like that in any way. Uh, but when I do, I'll probably make another short video on it. So that's it for, me, for this one. I just want to elaborate more so on how I do certain daily tasks, uh, you know, the stamina missions and all these kinds of things. And of course, uh, the class uh, of a priest, which is something I really wanted to talk about. So that's something I wanted to just uh, explain to you guys and also show you how the game crashes. So, <laughs> so there is that. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios, guys.